cameras inside the museum with the videos uh, during the missile attack to the on Kiev and when the, one of the rockets hit the playground 20 meters from the museum. And this is the video from the camera from our museum. Dutch Culture invited uh, seven uh, museum directors to the Netherlands in the frame of our visiting program and it means that uh, these colleagues from Ukraine spend a week uh, in the Netherlands, uh, we do museum visits, we visit uh, organizations, um, organize expert meetings uh, around topics which are interesting for uh, our colleagues and uh, we also explore how we can help as a Dutch cultural sector, the best uh, to Ukraine. We visited, uh, among others, the Rijksmuseum, uh, NEOD, the Resistance Museum. We went to the National Archive and the National Library, or the Royal Library in The Hague. We meet many uh, Dutch experts from very different fields. For instance, we meet an uh, expert from uh, Blue Shield, or cultural uh, emergency response, someone uh, from the Dutch police, uh, from the art crime uh, unit, the director of the Jewish uh, cultural quarter, but also exhibition design uh, experts, experts on uh, war and heritage. So the, the, the range is very wide. Cultural emergency response is a cultural relief organization. So we provide first aid to cultural heritage under threat in crisis situations. And since the beginning of the escalation of the war we were involved in Ukraine as well to work with local partners to help protect their collections, sites, buildings, etc. And when Dutch culture uh, came up with the idea to invite some uh, Ukrainian heritage experts to the Netherlands, uh, we were approached as SER to see how we could invite our partners and uh, give them an opportunity to actually help them in doing their work of heritage protection uh, on the ground in Ukraine because even though we're a year uh, year uh, in, it's still very much it's still very much needed. Uh, the Netherlands uh, is a country special to me because here in 2015 I participated in the first aid to cultural heritage training course, which changed my life. It was one year when the war started in Ukraine, and it was quite clear that we should get um, new tools, uh, knowledge how to respond to crisis, to war. So right now, we came to learn more on different aspects, starting from International Criminal Court, how we should collect evidences documenting the damaged objects, um, what should be done to make our culture much more resilient, uh, how we can um, create uh, the new exhibitions about, the, about hot history, how we present uh, contested history today. Um, also, we speak with our colleagues here in the Netherlands museums about art therapy, about uh, traumatic issues, how museums can be really such places for dialogue, making communities uh, inspiring with a hope for a for, for, for much better future. John, I came with the idea that we first had across this idea that you actually wanted to know three kind of topics. One is about the museum's role, how does the museum deal uh, in, with the present situations, which we already, of course, in the public meeting have discussed a lot. Um, the second is the role of yourself as museum experts. Printed in the, the art newspaper. It's very important to have new artifacts from the front line to do this oral history project, but also um, it's more important to save the people, save the collection. It's much more or less institutionalized because it is not only shared between, it's not individual memory, it's not the memory of family, all the families. We're always 
Oh, we bring things back like they were before, like people had them in memory. Thanks. During the iPhone conference. My, my main takeaway from the meeting today was, was just the, how rewarding it is to see the stamina with which the colleagues from the Ukraine deal with everyday crisis. How on the one hand they really have to respond to everything that new that is happening every day, while on the other hand they really take the responsibility also on a personal level, level to, be, to remain relevant as a museum and to try to define and redefine constantly the role that they play as museum professionals in such a situation of crisis. And for me it was really rewarding also to see what museums are really about today and how relevant museums can remain and how important it is that they're being led by people with the right motivation. I was deeply impressed. Well, you know, first of all, uh, it is actually the first time I left the country uh, for like a few years already, uh, for more than a few years. And uh, I felt really actually bad about leaving the country, about having to leave the country, because it feels like you never know what happens in the next few hours and you feel like you have to be with the museum, you have to be with your family because being at, at such a distance you might not be able to help. Uh, I'm Elena Mikhailovska. I'm deputy director of Khmelnytsky Regional Art Museum. We're quite a small museum, but we decided to help our museum community at the beginning of the war. Uh, that is why now we are a shelter for 15 collections from the Donetsk region and for six collection, private collections uh, from Kyiv and um, Kharkiv as well. Uh, to be a shelter for other museums means we help to evacuate collections to our uh, museum uh, and to save it. Uh, moreover, we um, have to rearrange everything and repack and um, if it needed, uh, we have to conserve uh, some of um, museum items. Um, we take care about collections and take care about museum employees. Um, it's a big challenge for small museum uh, because we have uh, 30 employees. It means researchers and uh, technical uh, personnel. Uh, but, uh, you know, during the war we uh, work twice uh, more because we understand that we are on the cultural front line and we have to work a lot uh, and to try to do our best in this situation when our culture, our Ukrainian culture, um, in danger, in great danger. The Heritage Ministry Response Initiative uh, just appeared as a response uh, to the attack on cultural heritage in Ukraine and its mission was the immediate response, the first aid to cultural heritage in times of crisis. So our mission was also to connect uh, Ukrainian uh, cultural organizations, Ukrainian authorities with international partners. Uh, also, uh, one of our goals is uh, documenting the damaged cultural heritage, uh, documenting and collecting all the evidences as crimes against culture. We organize exhibitions on the cultural resistance because we would like to show that the war is not only damage and attack, it is also kind of a resistance and becoming resi resilient. So we got a lot of equipment, protection, uh, which help us to respond to attempts of Putin regime to destroy not only objects or collections, but destroy uh, the barriers of cultural identity, to destroy um, the professional teams of the museums, to destroy the barriers of the in, intangible cultural heritage, to destroy us as a nation. So this is a kind of a genocide and terroristic war, and culture is a special target for Putin regime in this war. Therefore, in Ukraine, we name this war as a heritage or identity war as well. Well, uh, my role was to contribute and to tell something about uh, contested histories, which we think in the Rijks Museum also uh, yeah, is a part, uh, an important part of uh, our history. So 
we program uh, exhibitions, a uh, specific exhibition which I participated in in preparing the exhibition is the exhibition Revolusi, uh, Indonesia Independent. Well, I was very interested to, uh, to meet Igor and uh, uh, also because he was from the Maidan Museum, Maidan Revolusi, uh, Revolution Museum. Um, and um, yeah, it was interesting to see uh, that, that this museum collected all kinds of documents and posters and objects that were, were connected to the Maidan Revolution. Revolution. And, um, well, part of the research we did for the Revolusi exhibition in the Rijksmuseum also was very much uh, focusing on all these kinds of uh, outings and publications and pamphlets, so to say, that were made by Indonesian revolutionaries, uh, uh, documents that, uh, yeah, that reflected their, their uh, their strife for freedom and their, yeah, so to say, anti-colonial struggle. Well, I can tell you about the photos, you know. Uh, this one is uh, one of the field trips, one of the expeditions, the uh, Director General of the War Museum, uh, Dr. Yuri Savchuk, and the museum team, uh, they made into the deoccupied uh, regions of Kharkiv, Kharkiv region. And uh, uh, that is actually a fuel tank from a bombardment, from an airplane. And uh, as the story collected, oral history collected uh, in the region says that it might have been, we are verifying the information, but it might have been a fuel tank that uh, our pilot was uh, throwing uh, down, um, you know, in order to, uh, to escape death because he was burning and he uh, threw it down uh, in order to like fly somewhere further than the village, uh, not to hit the settlement. Uh, he succeeded, he did not hit the settlement, but uh, he did not hit the village, but he died, unfortunately he died. And now this uh, fuel tank, it's in the museum, in our museum, and uh, we understand that, you know, it will take time uh, to find the story, to verify it, but it's really important for us because it says uh, some people afterwards, I believe uh, local villagers, they wrote, uh, Putin go to hell uh, on this field. And uh, this is actually uh, the uh, part of the exhibition, Ukraine Crucifixion, uh, which was curated by the Director General Yuri Savchuk after these expeditions. Um, the designer is Anton Logov, one of our popular uh, contemporary artists, and the installation it was made by him. And it's like the um, rests of uh, Russian armor. You can see the part of the Russian car, military car, with the V, what they mean as victory. Um, and the, that is one of the parts of the um, exhibition, Ukraine Crucifixion. It is now exhibited in Kiev in the War Museum, but uh, fragments of uh, this exhibition are now on the February 24th. They were um, presented in Latvia and Estonia, I guess. So it's a really actually popular ex exhibition now. And it was opened in May, which is like three uh, months after the war stuff, full scale invasion started. And it was the first museum uh, exhibition in Ukraine to be opened. Its uniqueness is that it is made out of the artifacts during the ongoing war, about the ongoing war. And we believe in museum practice, well, at least we do not know anything like that. Uh, this is a photo from Chernihiv, uh, depicting one of our field trips. Uh, when we, uh, we, I mean Heritage Emergency Response Initiative and Maidan Museum team made the to Chernigim uh, immediately after its uh, liberation. I mean, it was blockaded by Russians. And um, we documented uh, cultural objects damaged uh, by Russian troops. And this is one of the most famous and the most precious historical bu building which was damaged. Um, the former Museum of Ukrainian Antiques, and it's in a very downtown, and it was 
d damaged, destroyed by Russian air striking. A few air bombs just collapsed it. And we've been there with uh, Emmanuel Durand. Uh, this is a French uh, architect uh, who worked in Beirut, in Lebanon, in particular, uh, making a laser scanning of the damaged buildings. So here we brought him to document the damage. They have all been taking up a crucial role in heritage protection for the past year and they will continue doing that. So we also as, a, as a, the Dutch network but also as the international community really have to think how can we continue to support them in the months and maybe years to, to come uh, because there is a, there's a lot of work ahead of us. If we were talk about how the Dutch cultural sector could help the Ukrainians, I see from this uh, from this journey from this program that um, there are many um, uh, very valuable experience which Dutch institution has in connection with uh, working with a difficult past and uh, with the um, questions of the how to serve the public, how the cultural institutions and how the museums could serve the public. I think that the experience and uh, knowledge which a Dutch institution could give us will be very appropriate and valuable uh, after the end of the war. The war brought up both the minuses and the pluses. Now that we uh, are bare, absolutely bare, because we had to dismantle all the exhibitions, we had to hide them, we had to hide, hide the collection, it is a chance to uh, get a new vision. I work at the War Museum, the National Museum of the History of Ukraine in the Second World War. We are thinking about broadening the scope of our museum to make it a museum of the struggle of Ukrainians for their independence. And that will start at the early 20th century when we declared the independence and we fought the Russians like we do today. But unfortunately, at that point, we had no support from the world and we lost. But we want our museum to be uh, a museum of the 100 years of Ukrainian struggle, military struggle for independence. And that's why it's really important for me to see the military museums uh, in Netherlands, in Amsterdam, and you have absolutely lovely military museums, and the Resistance Museum, and uh, the Maritime Museum. Uh, and it will, uh, you know, it brings up a lot of things that I can implement, we can implement at home. So I, you know, I um, waited uh, the pluses and minuses of leaving home for like 10 days. It's, it's a lot, including road. But at the same time, I understand that this is priceless experience, which will be very helpful for my colleagues and I.